it is really an expression of what the community thinks of, of police officers. Implicit bias is the unknowns, the things that we've seen on the videos and we've believed them because we never dug in and we never looked at, you know, the whole picture. So as a teacher, my job is to help my students grow. As a therapist, my job is to help my clients make changes and grow. As a coach, my job is not just to teach the kid the sports that I'm teaching, but also to build some value, some core values that we all need in life. And so that's my gift and I hope to give it back, pay it forward, so to say. I have um, three beautiful children. Um, my wife, we have a dog and a cat. My mom currently is visiting and living with us. We work hard during the week and um, we're involved, both my wife and I are involved in a lot of stuff but we reserve the weekends to just be outside. We all believe in our family that our religion is in what we give to the world. And if you're kind to the world and if you can give back to the community, that's the best religion you can be. Um, and so we, that's really, that's what we practice. It's nature and kindness. We'll dig a pit somewhere there and park. I think initially I, yeah. became friends with a cop who happened to have been a community cop and uh, him and I started having conversations, you know, genuine conversations, willing to listen to my stories um, and my experiences. I think I've learned a lot from him and his abilities and his education and his uh, passion. I mean, he is a very passionate, um, amazing human being and it really kind of rubs off on you when you surround yourself with those kind of people. He invited me to a ride along. Um, and so we struck a friendship and kind of a collaboration. And so in our ride along, of course, my kind of my mental health background, um, as we interacted with different people and I started realizing, no, that's not your job. I don't, you know, you don't have the skill set to deal with this person. One, they're clearly mentally ill um, and, and arresting them and putting them in jail and helping. <laughs> Throughout the ride along, um, just learning from Charles and learning, you know, he had worked in a bigger city in, in Portland um, and worked closely with law enforcement. And to, be, to learn from him and how, what he did there and us trying to, in some ways, replicate that system on a smaller scale within our community, to be sensitive to the, the people that are experiencing these crises and being able to help them. Um, it was powerful for me. And, and so, so we kind of decided that we're going to go on this journey to try to sell this idea to the department. I remember there was a gentleman who had asked me a question as we were doing a presentation about the benefits of having an embedded mental health person in the, in the police, uh, within the department, that a, uh, one of the cops had asked me a question that I found offensive, asked me about my criminal background and I just felt like he wasn't the place. Um, and my question back to him, and I asked if this were a white male talking to you, coming to talk to you as a professional, will that be the first thing, that question that comes into your head? That's when I thought, okay, there is implicit bias at play here. Given my experiences with the cops and given that question, which was kind of like the first question after a presentation, um, and that's where um, I also started reaching out to say we need to have more trainings on implicit bias in the, in the, in the department um, because truly it plays a part in how you interact with people of, uh, people of color and with peop you know, people minority based on, could be based on their sexual orientation, religious affiliation, socioeconomic status, um, and, and, and those biases, you know, play a part in, in law enforcement. 
is built within our fabrics um, and it is it is a harder one to take a look at because we do not believe in our core that what we are doing is hurting other people and and, and it's it's usually hard and more painful to look at it's easier for me to connect with somebody help them develop awareness of those internal thought processes that drive how they relate with people and if they can change that a person at a time eventually it leads into the bigger change changing the system changing the structure um, we can do that if we aren't changing ourselves Funding for Intersections is brought to you by the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.